We're now here in the UNM anatomy lab to demonstrate our last skill, the bougie-aided surgical cricothyroidotomy. The first step is to assemble the necessary equipment, which fortunately for this procedure is equipment that should be readily available in most airway kits. All that is needed is a scalpel, a 6-0 endotracheal tube with a syringe pre-attached and ready to inflate, a bougie and a self-inflating bag with an end tidal CO2 detector pre-attached. The next step in the procedure would be to appropriately prep and drape the patient. I realize that this is usually an emergency procedure and there may not be time to completely prep and drape the patient. The next step is to identify the appropriate landmarks. We're trying to find the cricothyroid membrane or the cricothyroid space, which sits between the thyroid cartilage or the laryngeal cartilage and the cricoid ring. On this cadaver, we have the thyroid cartilage here. This here is the laryngeal prominence or the Adam's apple. As we slide down, we come, this indentation is the cricothyroid space and here is the cricoid ring. The space in between represents the appropriate location for surgical cricothyroidotomy. In some patients, it may be necessary to perform an initial vertical incision to allow blunt dissection with your finger to actually identify the appropriate landmarks. But if the cricothyroid membrane can be identified without a vertical incision, that saves some time and some bleeding. Once your landmarks are identified, whether or not you've had to make a preceding vertical incision, we proceed to our one and a half to two centimeter transverse or horizontal incision through the cricothyroid membrane. We immediately place our finger into the opening to both save the location and bluntly enlarge the incision. We carefully set our scalpel down, take our bougie with the coup de tip pointed towards the feet, place it into the incision, passing it towards the feet, feeling for tracheal clicks, and then hold up. At this point, which is at about 12, 13 centimeters. You'll notice that this is considerably shorter distance than when we're placing the bougie all the way from the mouth for our normal intubation. Once the bougie has been placed and tracheal position is confirmed, we can safely let go. Our landmark is preserved. We then take our endotracheal tube, in this case a 6-0 tube to fit over our bougie, and pass that into the trachea. Some pressure and a slight back and forth motion may be required to gain access to the trachea. Once the balloon is completely inside the skin, this tube is deep enough. At that point, we can blow up our balloon and we can withdraw our bougie place our end tidal detector on the tube and ventilate the patient, confirming chest rise and appropriate color change, assuming that the patient is not in cardiac arrest. If in cardiac arrest, I would use an esophageal detector as an additional confirmation device. At this point, the procedure is done. We can ventilate and oxygenate the patient, and we need to be sure that the tube is appropriately secured in place so that it does not become dislodged during transportation and movement. Now let me show you one additional variation. This procedure can also be done with a Shiley. We'll withdraw the endotracheal tube. We'll reinsert our bougie as we had just done. And now instead of passing a 6-0 endotracheal tube, 
a size 6 Shiley may be placed over the bougie. And in the same manner, place it through our opening until it's against the skin. Bougie withdrawn, cuff inflated. and the patient can be ventilated and the shyly secured in place. And this concludes our skills demonstrations.